All right, this probability stuff is just, it's all based on chance. Okay, uh, and we can look at uh, a situation and determine what the chances of something are of happening before it happens and then also after it's been performed many times, uh, which really should just come right down to uh, what we assumed was going to happen. Okay, so a simple event is one outcome. Or collection of outcomes. Okay, so what are the chances you get head, heads when uh, you toss a coin? What are the chances you roll a six when playing Monopoly? What are the chances you roll two sixes? Okay, so an outcome would be what actually happens or what you would assume would happen based on what is... Uh, hmm what the activity is, okay, so if you're rolling a number cubes, uh, an outcome would be uh, two, okay, if you're rolling two number cubes, an outcome would be a six and a two, all right, so that's the difference between those. All right, so, uh, here are our hats, and we're going to just uh, go ahead and pick these. So let's say the first one, uh, we have a green hat. Uh, that's our first outcome. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and just choose one of these. Just randomly select one. Let's say the next one was uh, the black hat, and then three and four as well. All right, so if those if that's what we would have had as far as uh, choosing these hats, now let's write a ratio that compares the number of blue hats to the total number of hats. Well, as you can see, we didn't choose any blue hats, but there are four hats, so it would be 0 to 4. Now, describing a hat display, which you would have a better chance of selecting a red hat, uh, there's a couple things we can do. We can either add a red hat, or it is also possible that we may just want to take away one of the other hats as well. Okay. Uh, or we could do both, like this one. Okay, So this has improved our chances of getting a red hat uh, in both cases. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if I had also just taken away this one by itself... Uh, so we would have just taken away that green one, then yes, that still increases our chances of picking the red hat. All right, so this would describe a different situation where you can see that they had green, blue, red, and purple. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, but in any case, since they had chosen the blue hat once, it was one out of four. And again, they've just described another way we can find we can improve our chances of selecting a red hat. Alright, this is going to be a little confusing for you first. Okay, number of favorable outcomes, number of possible outcomes. None of that stuff really matters. Really, all this is trying to say is you're going to have a fraction, and what you're going to do is you're going to find out how many outcomes are there. So, on a six sided number cube or a dice, Okay, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's six of them, okay? Uh, and assuming that they were all numbered differently, like a regular uh, fair dice would be, uh, what are the chances? So, again, we would write this, the probability, what are the chances that you could roll a six? Okay, what are the chances you'd roll a six? Well, on a number cube, how many sixes are there? one of them. One of those is six. And this would be our probability of rolling a six. And that's what this that's what this indicates. The P tells you the probability of rolling a six. So let's look at another example. Alright, in this one I'm going to take the probability and let's toss a coin, alright? Pro probability of tails. Okay. So again, this is telling us it's the probability, probability of tails. Okay, so it's the probability of tails. 
So when you see that P, just know it's, it's asking for the probability or the chances of tossing a tails, in this case, because we're tossing a coin, all right? So again, let's get ourself a fraction. And how many possible outcomes are there? Well, in a coin, you first got, uh, you got heads, right? And then on the other side, uh, you've got tails. Maybe there's one of those buildings or something like that, okay? So you got heads or tails. So that gives us two possible uh, endings, two possible ways that this can happen. So you've got heads or tails. Now, what was the possibility of tails? Well, out of the two, one of them is tails. So you'd say... The probability of tossing a tails when tossing a coin is one half. Okay, so in this uh, in this homework, it's going to ask you to write the numbers as fractions, decimals, and percents. Okay, so you in some of them, you will need three different answers. All right, so if you need help with finding out how to write a decimal as a fraction or fraction as a decimal, or either of those two as percents, uh, just go ahead and find the lesson, the video of the lesson of that, okay? Now, one of the big conditions we need is uh, for the situation or the activity to be random otherwise it's going to mess around with some of these numbers and you get into a little bit more well you get into a lot more math okay so things need to be extremely random for this this type of stuff to work that we're doing today and so we we're just gonna look at all of them as though they were completely random alright so we did this one already uh, this is the probability of rolling a 6, right? So the probability of a 6, we already found out. Okay, we need our fraction. There's 6 outcomes. One of those numbers is a 6. Bam, 1, 6. Now, if I wanted to turn this into a fraction, all I'm going to do in the calc into a, this fraction into a decimal, I'm just going to plug this in to a calculator. Or you can do long division, right? You can do 1 divided by 6. Well, 6 won't go into 1, but it will go into 10 once, and then do your math from there, all right? Uh, but I like using a calculator, which just gave me 0.16 repeating. That's a nice decimal value there. And if I were to write this as a percent, as a whole percent, uh, then it would actually round up to 17% because there's many other 6s behind that one, okay? So this gave me my three answers here which is what I needed for this problem. All right, so give this one a shot. So again, you're tossing a coin. What are the chances it'll land on heads? Just if you didn't know, uh, there's only two possible situations here. You get heads or tails tossing a coin. All right, so let's look. The probability of heads. We've got a fraction. There's two outcomes. One of those is heads. Now, the percentage and the decimal for this, a lot of you know already. It's we've got a decimal of 0.5, which is the same as 50%. And this is done. That's all we needed. All right, so this is a different situation. So we're looking at a number cube. There's six sides, and we want the probability of rolling a two, three, or four, right? Well, on a number cube, there's six different surfaces or sides. Okay, there's six different outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Six different outcomes, okay? Now... Of those six, it's asking for one, two, three of the different uh, sides that you can roll. So what is the chances that you roll a two, three, or four? Well, three out of those, that's three choices out of the six. Okay, and uh, be careful with this because in some, some classes, 
your teachers are going to want this to be simplified, okay? However, uh, in this situation, uh, I feel like it's okay to keep it in this form because you're showing how many possible outcomes there are and also uh, the actual events that we want to happen. So the chances of rolling a two, three, or four, that's three different outcomes out of the six total outcomes, okay? Uh, but let's say that we did want to simplify that. So you can see that's one half, uh, which also would be 50%, which is also 0.5 as a decimal. And this would be my answer right here. Okay, so this is a spinner, and this is a spinning example for this type of situation. You want the probability in this first one uh, what's the probability that we spin and get on F? Again, this is random, so you're just flicking it. There's no manipulation, uh, which we could do, and we'll talk about that in a different uh, lesson. But for now, what is the probability of spinning an F? Okay. Well, one thing you're going to want to do for this is make sure that each of these are in uh, equal sections. Okay. So if we were to look at this wheel, we can see that uh, it's not the area that we're looking for in a spinner but what we are looking for is the angle are the angles the same now we don't have to measure these we can eyeball this because the book isn't going to make this too complicated uh, later on if you want to pursue more statistics and probability stuff in high school you, you, they may teach you this stuff okay certainly in college if you want to but uh, in this case we can just see that each of these sections of the wheel are pretty much the same. Okay, so we're going to assume that all these sections are the same. So the next thing we need to figure out is how many sections are there? So, well, let's go ahead and count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, there's ten. Ten different sections on the wheel. And how many of those are F? Well. After looking at this, I can only find one of them that's an F. Okay, so the probability of F is 1 over 10. As a fraction, the percent would be 10%, and the decimal is 0.1. So those are my three answers for this first one. Let's look at the second one here. So, again, there's 10 sections. So we can pretty much start both of these other fractions for C and D. And in C, it wants us to figure out the chances of spinning a D or a G. Now, on the wheel, you'll notice that D and G are... There, there's only one D and G, okay? In some cases, they may repeat. So, in other words, where the I is, there may be a D or a G there. But in this case, out of the ten possible outcomes, two of them are D or G. Now again, you can simplify this to one-fifth if you choose, uh, but we know we can uh, make this a percentage. Let's, in fact, let's start with the decimal because some of you would rather do that, right? 0 0.2, 2 tenths, which if we move the decimal over twice, we get 20%. All right, D, vowels. Uh, hopefully you know your vowels. A, E, I, O, and U. And right here, I out of the 10, I can count three vowels. Okay, so three out of 10. I can't simplify that anyway, so that's not going to matter. Uh, so as a decimal, again, you can put that in the calculator. Maybe some of you just know that 3 tenths is 0 0.3. Either one of those is fine. And if I move the decimal over twice, I'll have my percent at 30%. Okay, complementary event. So let's look at uh, rolling a number cube, right? You've got the probability of 6. Okay, this is the chances of rolling a 6, which we know is just 1 6. Okay. A complementary event is pretty much whatever 
The actual thing is not. So in other words, I would say, what's the probability of not rolling a 6? Well, how many numbers are there on a number cube? 6. Okay, and how many of those are not a 6? Well, you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 of those are not 6. Okay, so this would be... This one right here would be considered a complementary event um, to the probability of 6. Okay. Now, some of you notice if I were to take these two and add them, so if I took 1 sixth and add 5 sixths, I'd get 6 over 6, which is 1 or 100%. And that's what a complementary event is. If you take something that's that might not happen, that might happen rather, uh, you'd want to say, well, what are the chances that doesn't happen? And then when you combine them, you should get 100%. So another example of this would be, right, so we did the probability of tails. And it's complementary event. There's a couple ways we can write it. So if we're going to toss a coin, <clears throat> its complementary event would be the, per the, cha the chances or the probability of not tails. Well, since there's only two choices when tossing a coin, its complement may also be written as the probability of heads. All right, so let's look at this example, and let's see the complementary event case, because, again, this is looking for not red. <clears throat> okay, well, let's look. So the probability, when we want the probability, or the chances of not drawing a red. All right. Well, first we need to know how many marbles are there in the bag. See, there's 5, 8, and 7. That gives us 20 total marbles. Then, how many of those are not red? 8 of them are red, so you've got 5 and 7. That would give you 12 marbles that are not red. And again, if it is necessary to simplify this, it uh, looks like you'd have uh, 3 fifths. Okay. Uh, which as a decimal would be 0 0.6 and as a percent would be 60 percent. Okay? All right, so let's look at this one. Find the probability of not choosing a card with the number 13. So again, this example would tell us that there's a thousand cards in the deck because it gave us an unsimplified fraction. And of those thousand cards, eight of them are 13. So what are the chances that you would not get a 13? So probability of not 13. Well, how many cards are there? 1,000. How many of those are not an 8? Uh, rather, a 13. How many of those are not a 13? Well, to figure that out, you'd just take the 1,000 cards, you'd subtract the 8 that are 13s, and you'd get 992. So it's 992 of those are not 13s, and this would be it. Of course, you can simplify that fraction. There's going to be a lot of simplifying there. You could write it as a decimal and also a percent as well. Uh, yes, it does talk about this one. It's not likely that you'll choose a 13, because out of a 1,000 cards, 8 of them are 13. So, uh, But we could say the complement of this. We could say uh, there's a high chances that we will not choose a 13. Okay, it's, it, 
It kind of sounds the same as this, but it means something different. Uh, and it is giving us the same information. All right, give these ones a shot. See how you do. We'll give the answers here in just a second. <laughs> 